So it's Friday and it's the 2nd of January and we're going to have some physics fun. Here I've got in my hand a light. This is an ultraviolet light. Let's see what my clever ultraviolet light will do to these lovely spiders. So I'm going to wand my spiders. And my little stars. And we have a very special formula there. The formula is E equals HF. And you notice that my ultraviolet light, so it's just a very simple LED ultraviolet light. The reason you can see visible on my hand is because actually it's giving out some bluey purpley light, but that is ultraviolet light. And when I bring it over my little spiders, they go absolutely crazy. Look, let's hold one up to the light really close. There he is. Just simple Halloween spiders, so you could do this at home if you've got an ultraviolet torch as well. I've also got a tube here, test tube, and it's been painted with ultraviolet paint. Special type of paint that does something called fluorescence, but it's all due to quantum physics, which is E equals HF. Here I've also got, here's my bottle where the paint came from. A luminous bottle. Now, I've also got something quite clever. If I turn my other light off, I've got some laser light. I've got a purple light. I've got a green light, and that's really bright. And then I've got my final one. It's a red light. Now let's look. Now my spiders, I'm putting this bright red light that's a laser on there. Nothing happens. Let's go to the green light. Whoa, really bright light. Nothing happens. And I'll go to my final light, which is the laser light, the purple one, and look. I can paint out, again, exactly the same effect with my laser, my purple laser, which is actually a little bit of ultraviolet. See, just the same effect as if I use my special torch. That's what we need to have a look at and a think about what is this E equals HF. Okay, now then. Now we've looked at the fun stuff, that's all been swept away. Now let's have a think about this formula E equals HF. Well, when we talk about E equals HF, what we're talking about in effect is the energy that a photon has. And the energy of a photon in our universe is related by this thing called Planck constant, which is this, 6.63 times 10 to minus 34 joule seconds, multiplied by the frequency of the radiation. Now, that formula can be also combined with another formula we know, which is the wave equation. Well, if a wave is traveling at the speed of light, c, or three times 10 to the eight meters per second, we can say that C equals F lambda. So C over lambda is F, the frequency, the wavelength, the speed. We substitute our F and we leave E equals H C over lambda. So what we can then do is translate the energy of a photon to its wavelength or its frequency if we know the speed of light and the Planck constant. It's dead simple. Now, let's imagine we've got this situation like we've just seen. So here we've got these, uh, these spiders, these fluorescent spiders. So let's imagine the energy has fallen on our spider. So there we go, there's the energy. And we can clearly see energy's gone in, energy's coming out. Now, if we think about that as an energy level diagram, let's draw, here's our energy level diagram. So we'll draw a photon that comes in. So here we've got a line, okay, and here's our incoming photon, and we'll give this an energy of 4.9 electron volts. So we can imagine that that's energy that's coming. Now, I'd like to work out for that um, what its wavelength is. Well, it, it's actually very simple. We just use the equation here, E equals HC over lambda, but I must start off by converting the 4.9 EVs to joules, which is really easy. So we do 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. It's my conversion factor. 
which gives me 7.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So this energy here correlates to 7.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So you can see why as a physicist it's much easier to use EVs normally instead of joules unless I'm working something out like this much much quicker. So let's use then the E equals HC over lambda formula okay and we'll rearrange that to lambda is HC over E and of course I now know E I know H and I know C so let's do lambda is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second now that's a very long bit there so let's put a ruler in a really neat divide. We divide it by the energy of the incoming photon which we've already worked out. So let's put an arrow down in there because we worked that out previously. That gives us 2.536 times 10 to the minus 7. Now cleverly joules cancel with joules. Let's put a, a line through there. Hold on. Joules and joules. Okay, and seconds, and seconds cancel, leaves us with a unit of meters, or 254 nanometers, because 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters equals 1 nanometer. So, we've now worked out the incoming photon had a wavelength of 254 nanometers. So what we're trying to say here is this torch with all these ultraviolet LEDs, which I'll shine slightly that way, look, has ultraviolet light coming in. Now clearly what came out was not ultraviolet. So for example, let's say if we draw one smaller transition here, and then we'll do another smaller transition here. For example, we can do it on a diagonal slot if we want. Imagine if we had two more transitions, so we might have one that's a 2.7 EV and we could have one that's a 1.8 EVs. Well, if we did the same calculation and you can run all the numbers through again, the only thing that changes is the energy here. Effectively, if we had 2.7 EVs, we would be looking at about 460 nanometers and here we'd be looking at uh, well, 688 nanometers. This would lead us to roughly, uh, let's look at the blue stroke indigo, and this one would lead us roughly to the red or orange. So what we're talking about is we'd have an outgoing photon that's red or orange, and an outgoing photon that's blue or indigo. In which case, what we've done there, quite cleverly, just clear off our stuff, is we've had energy that's come in that's got quite a large number of EVs and an atom has gone into an excited state. So here we've got my spider. So there's my spider becomes excited and it's giving out light, but clearly we know it's giving out light of a different colour different wavelength for different frequency and we can see there that the visible spectrum is when you have a smaller number of EVs and depending on what number if we go across to here we can see 2, two to 350 is roughly UV 390 to 700 is the visible range and we've got a range of colors in between so we've just used the formula E equals HF and looked at a very simple idea of fluorescence.